Well, CPR is a life-saving technique that helps deliver blood to the brain and the heart and other vital organs after a cardiac arrest. Most of the time, uh, bystanders expect that the EMS folks will get there quickly, and most of the time they, they do get there pretty quickly. But four to six minutes is the time frame in which the brain can suffer permanent damage. And often EMS can't really get there that fast. Um, even if you live right next door, they may be out on another call. So it's very important that bystanders learn how to do CPR. One reason that bystanders don't attempt CPR is they may not actually recognize that a cardiac arrest is, is the problem. Um, in the moments following a cardiac arrest, sometimes the patient continues to have some uh, gasping type uh, breathing movements. And so they may think, well, the person is still breathing. And when they call 911, they just say, you know, the person is unconscious, but they're breathing. Another thing that sometimes happens is as the brain is uh, suddenly losing circulation, there may be some jerking type motions that look like seizures. And so they may call in and say, you know, this person has had a seizure, you know, send help right away, when really a cardiac arrest has occurred. Most of the time, you can expect that the person in cardiac arrest will look very lifeless. There will be no movement, no breathing, and that's you know, what we want you to act upon. Another reason that bystanders may not attempt to do CPR is that they have concerns about liability, especially if they've not had formal training in what to do. But most states, including Virginia, have what's called the Good Samaritan Law. This law protects bystanders who try to help anyone having a medical emergency. Another possible reason that bystanders may um, hesitate to help is if they haven't had formal training, they're afraid that they may cause more harm. But the reality is that there's very little chance of doing serious harm to the person who has had a cardiac arrest by administering CPR, even with just very minimal training. So what I'd like to keep in mind is, you know, which will cause more harm, doing something or doing nothing? And we know that doing nothing is likely to result in serious harm or death. The American Heart Association has been promoting a very simplified method of CPR for several years now. And this is designed specifically for this type of situation, for people who don't have extensive knowledge of how to do CPR. This method is called hands-only CPR and involves just giving chest compressions to the person who has become unresponsive and is not breathing. We're going to watch uh, a quick video to show you exactly what you need to know to help someone who's having a cardiac arrest. If you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, it's important to act fast. Helping to save a life is easier than you might think. Just start hands-only CPR. The first step is to send someone to call 911 or call 911 yourself. Then get directly over the victim. Put the heel of one hand in the center of the chest, then put your other hand on top of the first. Then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. It's important to push at a rate of at least 100 beats per minute, which is about this tempo. Let's hope you never have to use hands-only CPR, but if you see a teen or adult suddenly collapse, don't be afraid to try it. Remember, call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Your actions can help save a life. To learn more, call 877-AHA-4CPR or visit heart.org slash hands-only CPR.